Hello there. Some people have asked for um, the bread that I put on the Scottish Recipes site the other day. We had it at the Salvation Army lunch. Um, I'll say how to do it. So this is it. It's a very simple bread. It works on a principle of 75% hydration, which means for every 100 grams of flour, you add 75 grams of liquid. So I've got 400 grams of flour and 300 grams Let's hope I've done my maths right. Of warm water. Into that, I'm going to put a teaspoon, maybe half, one and a half teaspoons of instant yeast. Probably a packet if you're buying it from the shops in a small amount. A uh, couple of teaspoons of salt. There we go. Shouldn't put the salt on the yeast, but I did there. Uh, a tablespoon of sugar and then we're going to use some oil you could use melted butter give you a nice buttery flavor um, however for some of us watching our cholesterol we're going to put in a tablespoon of extra virgin cold pressed um, Scottish rapeseed oil it's really nice stuff and it has a beautiful yellow color to it as well as you can see so that's all that goes into the bread, really, to be honest. It's, you know, just liquid and flour. But it's what you do to it. So we're going to start mixing it. And once we form a dough, we're going to have to knead it. Now, unlike a lot of doughs, this is a very wet dough. So there's different ways to handle it. So first of all, I would personally either knead it in a, a, a stand mixer, like KitchenAid, um, or just do it in the bowl here because it is a really sticky dough but after 10 minutes you will see it will come together don't panic and add more flour because look it looks like it needs it but it honestly it doesn't the more liquid you have the bubblier the dough at the end of it the, the loaf will be so i'm going to work that for 10 minutes so there you go that's been going for 10 minutes you can see it's kind of come to a bowl now it's a very sticky wet dough. This is why it needs handling slightly differently. Can you see I'm stretching it now? So what we're doing is going north, south, east and west. Stretch, turn, stretch, turn. Just keep doing that. And the more that's done, the stronger the dough will get. You can see it's holding a shape now. Okay, so that's 10 minutes work. Now what we do is we leave it to rise. We're, normally I would say we're looking to double it in size, but what we're going to do is every sort of 15, 20 minutes, we're going to come and we're going to do this folding process again. Because after 10 minutes, that's going to look like it's gone to liquid. It will go... Through. So we do that stretching motion, and that will bring it back. And after doing that four times, you'll have a really good strong dough. So we'll leave that now for 20 minutes and then I'll show you how to stretch it. Okay, it's been 15, 20 minutes. You can see it's kind of relaxing, spreading out. All the way through this bread making process, this particular dough, you're going to think you've done it wrong because it's too wet. It's not. It's very similar to a pizza dough. You could use this as a pizza dough, to be honest. Um, to avoid your hands getting stuck in it, have a bowl of water. And just dip your hand in it to give you a, just so you've got a wet hand. Then just take the north and pull. Turn it. Pull. Turn it. Pull. Now with each pull, you're going to see it strengthen. And just hold the ball a bit more. Eventually you'll be able to pick it up and pull it about. But to begin with, just do the north, south, east and west. Pull it together. Now we're going to let that sit with a cloth over it for about 20 minutes or so and then we'll do the same again. Okay, it's uh, risen again, so once again, wet your hand, pull, fold, pull, fold. You can see how strong it's getting there by the way it's holding its shape. It's very nearly there. Another two sets of pulls and that will be ready to go in the oven. Well prep up for the oven so we'll leave that 
another 15 minutes or so. There we go, time for another stretch. You can see it hasn't lost its shape this time. So it's very nearly there. As I'm lifting, well you can see, look, it's coming away from the ball now. That is just about there. We'll leave it another 15 minutes and do one more pull and then we'll shape it. But you can see, you think, I mean, I've not added any more flour to that or anything. It's the same dough it was when we stopped the kneading process. So even though you think you may have messed it up, you haven't. It's just, it needs that stretching. If you can imagine all the proteins in there are soldiers piled up in a little heap, not very strong. If you stand them all up like Roman soldiers, they'll be strong and in line. So that's what you're doing by stretching it. You're lining up the proteins. Yeah, I know, no one needs to know that, but that's what it is. Okay, so we're ready to shape it now. You can see it's a totally different animal to what it was earlier. So no, no water this time. Dip your hand in flour. Get some flour on the board. And kind of tease it out. Don't try and lift it. It will go wrong. There we go. Now, you can do this any shape you like. We're going for a farmhouse sort of bloomer style. So we're just going to roll it, dig our fingers and drag it back a bit. Kind of making a big old sausage. And as you do that, you can feel the dough tightening up. And that's all we're going to do to it. Now I'm going to put this not on a baking tray because I find the baking tray kind of insulates the bottom and doesn't allow the heat in. So I've got the, the rack from the oven and I've got a silicon uh, mat on it. These are great. Nothing sticks to them. They can take any heat. I even use one to barbecue. So just pop it on there like that. And we're going to kind of let that double in size. Don't worry. When it sits, it will spread and you think, oh no, it's gone wrong again. It hasn't. Just bear with it. So we'll leave that to sit for about, I don't know, seats. It kind of nearly doubles. So a half hour maybe. Okay, this is plumped up nicely now. It's been 20 minutes. But if you're doing this in the summer, it's going to be quicker. If you're in a cold house, it's going to be slower. There's no science really in, in bread. It all depends on the elements, how warm the water is, how this is and what have you. Now, on the picture I put on the um, the Facebook thing, the other bread was a seeded one. It's exactly the same except I threw um, some sunflower seeds, poppy seeds and pumpkin seeds in there. Just adds a bit of flavour. Um, this is just white. I've got the oven at 200 degrees. I've got some steam going in now. Um, you can put a little pan at the bottom, fill it with boiling water, something like that. But just get a little bit of steam going. So three cuts, one in the middle, one there, and one there. Give them a proper good cut. Now that's going in the oven, just in case your chaps haven't got one. For the cleanup, these are really useful. They're also good for cutting bread, scraping up, and all sorts of nonsense in the kitchen. But it just helps you clear up. Okay, that was in the oven for... 25 minutes at 200. I don't know if you can hear, I'll try and make the sound. It's got like a hollow sound to it. That means it's cooked. You can hear that, yeah? So that's it. Let it cool down. And see what we will do. You shouldn't really cut it until it's cooled down because you mess with the dough. But I'll just show you the inside. And you can see you've got the nice bubble formation. It's very, very soft. This is a great bread for dunking in soup. Maybe just taking a nice bit of cheese and even just some fresh butter and marmalade, to be honest. But it's very soft, very nice. You can see the, there, it's just an old fashioned loaf, really. But um, yeah, if you want to put some seeds in it, go ahead. Um, it's nice and cheap. Um, and really worthwhile doing. Don't think you've messed it up because it's all wet and squidgy. That's how it's supposed to be. Give it a try. Enjoy.